happy to be here. So much. We're happy to be here. Our work is called Exploring Language Ideologies, Integrating Digital and Computational Literacies in Bilingual Teacher Education. I'm Veronica Paredes. I'm Jessica Lebesello. Um, so as we mentioned, I'm a third year PhD student at Urban Education Program in the City University of New York. I'm interested in working alongside immigrant origin teachers to get to know their epistemologies and how that translates into their pedagogy, pedagogies. And um, Jessica Valencia, I'm a teacher educator and an education researcher at the City University of New York. A lot of my work has to do with how we create curriculum design for teachers. So as teachers and educators, how do we do that? At the intersection of language justice and immigration and how we sustain literacy because I come from a literacy background. So here's a bit of an introduction to our work. And like I mentioned, our work focused a lot on teacher education and how we are preparing future teachers and those in service teachers uh, to become teachers in, in New York City specifically, um, or Southern New York, actually. But what we're focusing on a lot is in curriculum design, how it plays a very crucial role into how we create curriculum for students who are linguistically diverse learners. Mm -hmm. um, our work has to do a lot of collaboration as well, how we can co-design uh, work to then present it to, the, to those who are going to be teachers or are currently in service teachers, which is a common program in, in, in the US where um, teachers that are already teachers come back to school to continue their masters as they are working. Um, and then our work has to do about like how do we create those very intentional opportunities for students to then reflect and explore whatever content they're learning. Our goals was pretty much to like how to build up the knowledge for students to understand the content and then how do then they apply it in bilingual education settings. Um, and then another goal that we had is that we are trying to integrate computation and digital literacies into pedagogical practice. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. In the, yeah, in the next slide. So the context of this research has to do a lot with the setting of the bilingual education course where teachers are going to become bilingual teachers in different content. So it could be science, math, ELA or SLA, uh, social studies, language arts, whichever it is. But is there going to be the bilingual teacher in that classroom? Uh, our course is also part of a big initiative within the system that we work in, which is the City University of New York. It's called CUNY site. It's a computer integrated education initiative. There's more information there if you would like to see it. But as part of CUNY site, the course itself is trying to also integrate computation and digital literacies into how teacher educators are then teaching teachers how to then teach the K-12 or the P-12 students. Uh, the goal of the initiative is to weave whatever content knowledge teachers are teaching and in our case in bilingual education with computation and digital literacy. And we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like. Um, so Sites Framework talks a lot about how when we are training teachers, um, what do they need to learn about technology? What do they need to learn about computation and digital literacy? And it has to do a lot about them have engaging in conversations about technology, uh, learning with technology, so they're prepared to then teach with technology, and then practicing through the technology that they're using, and then sometimes critically thinking about the ways in which we should go against technology. Um, and then we integrate that into teachers' pedagogy, meaning that we are then teaching those teachers how we're going to use that in the classroom. And we're hoping that they use the same framework so that they can they use it in their own classrooms when they get very specifically teaching students about with through and against an object. So that's the context of the course and where it lives. So some key points that surfaced when we're doing this work were the opportunities for exploration and reflection that kind of came up through our collaboration um, and then thus informed our course design. And we're going to talk a little bit about our process now. So one of the things that we really focused on that kind of came naturally for us because we were co-designing this course was collaboration, but we wanted to look at it more purposefully to see what was going on behind the scenes between us and what was the outcome for our students. Um, 
particularly this using collaboration as a methodology really kind of helped us um, make visible our pedagogical stances and um, gave us opportunities to kind of think through multiple perspectives. Um, it also um, allowed us to counter some of the individualistic and siloed ways that we do work for and through and in the academy. So collaboration became like really important for us because it took us away from just always doing this individualistic work. Part of our collaboration was also driven through our own experiences. Um, but some of the things that happened throughout our collaboration was uh, vetting for course resources, how, why, and where to use those and when and why. Um, we also exchanged ideas to sort of develop and define course activities and, uh, and materials, like I said. We also addressed ongoing challenges in real time. So as they came up, it was nice to have somebody to kind of bounce ideas off with one another in real time to make course adjustments in that way. Um, and besides centering our own pedagogical expertise or like what we kind of came together to spell out for us and to guide our work, uh, we really leveraged our lived experiences uh, and our bilingual backgrounds as well. And in doing so, uh, this led us to recognize that a common curricular concern was that students lacked structured opportunities to explore beliefs and perceptions regarding language, their language use, and language education overall. And again, these students are um, working to teach bilingual and emerging bilingual students. So it's really important for us to give them the time and space for them to sort out these ideas and these language beliefs, um, even through their own experiences as well. So in our collaboration and in highlighting our own lived experiences as bilingual educators and as bilingual people, uh, we recognize that this was something that our future teachers needed as well, some time and space to do this sort of uh, metacognitive work around language. So um, we are still working together and so this work has been taken um, on, has been taken on throughout the whole year and it continues. Uh, we started in summer 2023, as Jess mentioned, um, through CUNY Sites program. Uh, we attended professional development uh, where we created artifacts or classroom activities, which we'll talk a little bit about what how what that looks like in, in the course later. And then four months we continued we uh meeting weekly to co-design these lessons, um, like we mentioned, to plan future sessions and modify the course materials. And um, come spring of 2024, we are continuing to meet weekly to co-design uh, a course for this was undergrad level students. So we're continuing to do this work with graduate students or actually vice versa. We, this work was done with graduate level students. And now we're continuing to do that and offer these opportunities for undergrad students. And this is some descriptions of the assignments that this course had. There were many others, but we wanted to highlight a few. So as we mentioned, this is a bilingual education course. One of the things that we wanted students to do is create a bilingual education timeline, meaning looking at the context of the US history with bilingual education. Students use digital tools to create it, specifically they use Padlet. Um, then we wanted them to engage in unplugged computation and literacy. So we we work together on doing a paper engineering pop-up. Uh, at the end of the course, what students do is they create a multimedia portfolio where they uh, create curriculum for the students that they will have in the classroom. So like I mentioned before, our students range from they teach preschool or they teach sixth grade or they teach high school. So it really is a huge range. Too. The multimedia portfolio is very specific to whatever class they are teaching. And throughout the semester, they also had ongoing journals that they were keeping uh, to reflect on readings and to reflect on their own English practices. So one of the assignments, as I mentioned, the bilingual timeline looked something like this. This is from that specific class where each student was given an era to look at, like the policy and the history of bilingual education during the 1890s, the 1920s. So then in groups, they created a bilingual timeline. This allowed them to not just read about bilingual education, but also deeply engage into thinking about how the history and the policies in the United States lead to the way in which bilingual education is shaped. Uh, the next activity was the, and that's more of a close up to the, uh, to the timeline. 
Uh, the next activity that students did was page page for engineering pop ups. Um, we gave them a lot of the computational literacy uh, definitions in the beginning, where we were talking about computational thinking. Um, and we also created video modules for them. We created uh, this was an online course, so a lot of the information that we were giving them had to be with the uh, we had to provide online versions of it. We needed to provide all these scaffolding. So we created all of that in our code designing sessions. And then the last assignment, I'm sorry, and then we also created modules where students will be able to be like from beginner to more intermediate, go across the semester going into, oh, this pop-up is something to an introductory version of it. And then the next pop-up was a little bit more difficult. Uh, and then we also had to prep them to think about not just the design of the pop-ups, but the content of it. And one of the things that we wanted them to really think about is how language presents itself internally for ourselves, like your, your own language ideologies and your perception. Uh, and those would have been the internal sections. And then the external about how the society views language. So which is why we prepped them with policy and historical context of bilingual education. So we gave them models of, of ourselves as well too, like the way that we perceive and view language and then the way society perceives and views our language. So you can see that we gave them the outside turn on the internal. So something that was really important for us that came up through our collaborative experience was the idea that we should be doing what we are asking students to do to kind of troubleshoot and proactively come across any roadblock that they might come across as well. Um, so, uh, like Jess mentioned, uh, the final assignment asked them to represent their language ideologies through a paper engineering design, like a pop up. And we went through it as well ourselves. So, on the left side is my example, and on the right side is Jess's example. Um, and you can see on the highlighted yellow bar on the left side, it's sort of my think out loud um, detail example that I kind of shared out with the, with the students because they felt. Um, they felt it was a bit difficult to kind of represent their language ideology, such an abstract thought on such a uh, physical um, expression, right? Um, so in thinking about the design of the physical expression of their language ideologies, in the left side, I think out loud, um, and I envision this, this pop-up as a table, and I'm asking myself, like, who's invited to this table to make decisions about language? Who says that there's a particular way of speaking and who is kind of given the authority, quote unquote, to say, this is this is what it should sound like. This is what this pronunciation should sound like and vice versa. And who's outside of that table, right? And thinking about that I, um, that uh, scaffold that we had earlier to help them think about internalized and internal language ideologies versus external uh, ideas that they come 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 across. So that's how I presented it to the students. And it was really helpful for them to kind of hear me think out loud through that process. Um, because then I gave them ideas on how they can approach the assignment as well. And mine was a, a finished example. Like this is an example of what it could look like, right? I have my internal inside, my external inside students to get a very different function, but it was helpful for them to see uh, different representations of the same assignment. And these are some examples of what students created from the left on uh, using that they created a structure, even though the structures themselves weren't as complicated, the students kept with the basic versions of the pop-ups that we did. The content was very strong where they decided to put external and internal on the different, uh, the different sides. And then when they had the coils, they actually also color-coded it to show that they were using translanguaging because they were thinking about like, this is the way that I language throughout my life where I'm using English and in this case, it's Spanish at the same time. Uh, the one in the middle, the student that I did it, they did a mechanism um, that they were very, the way that he mentioned it was that when he first did it, he wanted to do a very simple one, but then he saw other people do more complicated ones and he became very motivated to actually do something more. So he started from scratch and he began a whole new thing. He decided to do a mechanism with each of the flaps that he has was a different uh, idea about language that he's come across. And the sides were divided between his own uh, understanding of language and his own ideologies, and then also the way society views his own, views him. And then the last one, the students struggled a lot, and he mentioned it. And this was a very critical moment, and we decided to definitely 
in Buddhas because it was someone that in their reflection was very much reflecting about how they approach the process of creating pop-ups and how in creating the pop-up, they realize that their own ideologies sometimes get in the way because what he did is he gave up uh, because he found it difficult and then came back to it later after the reflection and decided well, like, why was it difficult for me? Was it because I gave, why do I give up so easily? Is this how my students struggle when they find something difficult? So in creating it, his reflection was actually the strongest part of his pop up. And then he decided to then like wanting to do it again, but with his students in different ways. Um, so of course we came as proactively as we wanted to, we came um, across some challenges, right? One of the challenges is that we didn't know what the background of our students were in relation to computational and digital literacies, right? That both have been showed you earlier. Um, so we did choose to represent that key terminology in relation to the pop-up making part. Um, but once we got to know our students, we also understood that they were still kind of hesitant around the vocabulary or the application of that terminology on to beyond the processes of paper making. And so what we decided was to explain, to apply that terminology, to explain the things that they were already engaging in, particularly pedagogical moves in the classroom, like designing curriculum, activities, et cetera. So once we started using some of the terminology to kind of say, listen, you already kind of do this, you already debug your lesson plans, you're, exper you're experimenting through different kinds of activities <laughs> and trying that and iterating those things, right? So we're applying the terminology to the, the lesson making lesson plan processes that they are already engaging in and familiar with. And that was one of the key moments of that. And at, as much as possible, we were trying to sort of highlight metacognitive moments in which they were already sort of doing that um, that crossover between terminology and application for uh, lesson design, pedagogical design. Uh, other things that we also um, come up, came across was um, something that we ended up offering um, is the connection of the terminology used to describe design processes. And we, the CDLs and their assignments themselves help broaden students' perspectives and awareness of their so of social inequalities. And particularly when we introduced discriminatory social design. And so we explore discriminatory design in architecture, in computing, of course, like this idea of coded bias and how design processes can contribute to inequalities and discrimination. And in the and eventually, right, language discrimination and designing for language education and how that also um, a lot of decisions that go on the behind the scenes design making processes of say lesson plans or activities. Um, these are some, some of the things that they have to become cognizant of these language ideologies, essentially. So we conclude, right, like our core design was very much about thinking how to integrate the content knowledge, which is bilingual education for us, with competition and digital literacies, which for the state in which we work in is, it's being revamped. Like there's new standards, uh, teachers are, especially elementary school teachers are now expected to teach with, uh, Competition and digital literacy. There's supposed to be digital fluency, so we're kind of trying to to help the teachers in a way to to think about like where is the gap of like in service teachers and how they are teaching their students and how can we support them. But at the same time, being critical because we in bilingual education, specifically in the area that we teach, students continue. We want them to use trans language and we want them to critically think about language with a racial linguistic ideology lens. Um, right, so the course itself grants the students these opportunities to explore both uh, competition and digital literacies, but then at the same time think about how language ideologies are playing a role in, the, in their curriculum design choices. And then in our collaboration for us, it was so important because we gave each other different perspectives um, because we come from different backgrounds and in both designing the course, and in Veronica teaching some of some of the classes and me observing that we were able to to constantly iterate the class with our own observations, with our own perspectives, but then having someone there to just witness what students are doing and what they're asking for made us then reflect and think back up about our own design for integrating competition and digital things. And we think it's very important for teacher education programs to think this because it matters how we are training the next generation of teachers. 
Uh, we want students to definitely explore new content so that they, they can take it to their own classrooms. Uh, we definitely, at least, we think, and many argue that reflection on our own ideologies and their relationship really makes us very aware of how we are designing the curriculum for young students. And that's all. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much for a very interesting uh, uh, presentation. I think it's so interesting to hear how you uh, 